Hello everybody, my name is Melissa and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I am so happy to have you. I just want to say happy new year welcome to 2022 how did these past two years just like fly by I have no idea and I'm pretty sure you probably feel the same way I hope you had a wonderful new year I still have a couple videos that I want to kind of talk about my reading of 2021 basically I read a total of 75 books I made it to my goal on the very last day of the year so whoop, i made it um which is really kind of like i'm excited that i finally was able to accomplish that but unfortunately it was my least amount of books read in the past like however long i have been on goodreads or like participating in the reading challenge i think since like 2018. that being said today's video is actually going to be my most favorite romance books of 2021. I want to do another video about books that are not romance related that I really enjoyed because there are some that I absolutely loved and adored. I've been thinking about also doing um, some other videos but anyways that's neither here nor there. Let's go ahead and get into the whole point of this video and talk about the books, the romance books that I loved in the year of 2021. The very first book that I want to talk about is actually one that kind of sparked my reading back at the beginning of or kind of mid to beginning of the new year and that is k-pop confidential by stephen lee this is a young adult book has some romance aspects to it but the reason why i put this in here it's my one of my runner-ups i gave this book four stars i really enjoyed it it was a super quick read if you like k-pop if you like kind of like not just like a like main character hero that is a k-pop star but if you like the heroine kind of traversing through kind of figuring out how to be a part of this world this book just it gave you that i really enjoyed it i had so much fun i really enjoyed how this main character kind of struggled with the issue of coming from america and the culture shock of going to korea or south korea and making her way through and trying to understand like <laughs> how this industry is and how it's very very difficult on those that are trying to make it this has some very very good points in it and i adored it so much it actually like kick-started me into reading more k-pop books on my kindles as well so or on my kindle so if you want to check out my goodreads i have all the books that i read obviously on there this sparked that love for me and i'm, I'm so thankful that i read it so four stars very very fun super quick very short read i think there should be a second book coming out soon if it hasn't come out already very excited this next book is one that i gave four stars to but i feel like it was very very impactful in getting me back into reading especially since this genre is one that i really just didn't read i feel like too much or like really good books in this genre as i have in the past and that is a lady of rook's grave manor by Catherine moon sorry i'm trying to avoid the um shiny parts here um this is about a girl who is i guess she's a maid and this doctor finds her and he's like hey i think you would be like a really good position to work in this manor house and basically it's kind of like these girls are escorts but they're escorts to monsters and this just was so much fun you see a bunch of different characters from literature like um i want to say like the invisible man there was like Dracula I want to say I can't even remember this book was just wild and tons of fun so I know this was a lot of people's kind of first foray and to the reverse harem genre and I think it was an absolute great one to pick up 
I was so glad that I saw other people reading it, so I gave it a try myself. I know the second book, I believe, is coming out here soon in the next couple months or so, and I definitely want to pick it up as well. So if you are looking to give a try to Reverse Harem and you like paranormal books, I think this is a great one to start off with. So the last runner-up book that I gave four stars is called Find Me by Ashley Rostek. I believe I'm saying her last name right. If I'm wrong, I'm so sorry. This is one that I just kind of picked up on a whim I saw the cover and I was just like "Ooh, that's really pretty so I picked it up on Kindle Unlimited and I'm so glad I did this one is definitely very kind of difficult to deal with at times because our main character has PTSD she was a witness of her parents being murdered she was like had a bunch of other like issues going on with this like psycho stalker that was her teacher and you see her basically after like a year or so from that time and she's now living in a new state in a new town with a new name and her uncle kind of just drops her off and is like okay good luck <laughs> and she has to like figure out how to like move on by herself because she's kind of left there by herself. Of course, she has four lovely neighbors and they're all brothers. So this is another reverse harem story, but I really liked this. I thought the brothers just had such a great bond. You see like obviously the oldest is the one that's like the more like like pushing away of the relationship and then you have the two younger ones which are a set of twins and it was just so much fun i really enjoyed it and it did have some very triggering aspects to it so again if you are sensitive to certain subjects definitely check that out but i think save me was just yeah, I'm sorry. Find Me was really, really good. And then I recently just read the last or the second book, Save Me, on literally the last day of the year. So I really had a lot of fun with this book, like two books so far in this series. So if you are interested in checking out something that has a little bit more of a thriller aspect, definitely check this out. I had a lot of fun. All right, so kind of talking about my five star romance reads of the year. The first one is going to be one that I think I've seen on several other different booktubers, it's like favorite romance books of the year. And that is the Mind F series by St. Abby. So this book I believe is four books in total. I am in the middle of the fourth book. I know I really need to finish it, but I just don't want it to end. This is a very different, kind of scenario where our main character she is a serial killer but she goes after like these bad guys who do very bad deeds or maybe she's getting revenge on something that happened to her past so there are another like trigger content warnings as well to go along with this book series but oh my gosh i really liked this whole dynamic because the male lead character he's actually an fbi agent who is assigned to find her and um you know because she's the murderer and he doesn't know who she is and it was just really interesting to kind of see this dynamic kind of like cat and mouse game in a way and i really just like thoroughly enjoyed how much i loved the story of course there were some spicy scenes as well but i found myself really interested in the storyline and what was going to happen next and all of that kind of stuff because our character obviously she's a kick-ass main character and we just love that here so definitely one to check out if you like that whole like turning over on its head kind of trope of the girl being the serial killer. Alrighty, the next book that I want to talk about that was of course five stars is Culty by Mariana Zapata. I just can kick myself. I cannot believe that it took me this long to finally pick this book up. It was one that was never on Kindle Unlimited, so that also has another, like, a big reason why I never picked it up, but I just should have paid however much it was just to give it a try. This book is in the same, like, universe as Wait For Me, which is one of my favorites by her, but Culty is basically about this girl. She is a female soccer player who, like, is getting older in her career but not too old and it turns out that her new soccer coach is her like long time crush when she was a young girl 
culty and basically yeah like they start a friendship this is a very slow burn romance i that's one of the biggest things about mariana zapata obviously she is the queen of slow burns at slow burn romance as everyone says and she definitely deserves that title this book is spectacular in the way that it kind of starts off with that friendship and really just grows and blossoms into kind of those feelings of a deeper connection and that's why you can sit there and read this really long book and just kind of be invested and care about these characters I really loved this. This definitely had a lot to do with like politics and sports and just a lot of different things that happened and I really enjoyed like the grumpy sunshine aspect of this book because Colty is just not a very nice guy. He's doing this kind of you don't really know why he is a coach there because he doesn't seem that interested in doing his job. And of course, our main girl, Sal, she calls him out on it and it sparks this friendship. This book is set in Houston, Texas, where she is playing soccer for the team here in Texas. And it was just, oh my gosh, I love this book. So, so much fun. I tabbed a bunch of like... I don't know. I tabbed a bunch in this book. I don't know where I'm going with that. Basically, really, really loved it. Kicking myself for not reading it sooner. Definitely a great one to pick up if you have not. The next five star read that I want to talk about is The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. This one, oh my gosh, if you like fan fiction, but fan fiction done very, very well, you will love this. I think this book was probably one of the most popular books of 2021. I keep wanting to say 2020, 2021, and for a very good reason. This is basically about a girl named Olive. She is a PhD candidate student, and she finds herself like in this situation where she is kissing this random guy in the hallway because she wants to show her best friend that she's no longer interested in her ex-boyfriend so her best friends can start dating that guy. So lo and behold, it turns out that it is this like grumpy professor that no one really likes. He's obviously very good looking, but no one likes him because he's very, very hard on his students. He very much cares about what he does and he just like, no error in all the things that happens anyways this is so cute it starts off this like fake dating kind of snowball effect and of course if you like that trope this is definitely one that you have to have to pick up because it was so much fun um yeah basically it's super cute i really enjoyed it you also see the aspect of like oh well you're dating this professor like why couldn't you know you help me out by telling him to give me a better grade you know that whole thing that comes with dealing with dating in like a workplace environment so anyways if you haven't read it haven't heard about it definitely pick it up super cute super fun i think i read this like I don't know if it was a day or so, but I read this super quickly and definitely worth it. The next five star read that I have to talk about is The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas. This is a book that I feel like everyone talks about. It was literally everywhere. It was independently published and this book just got so much hype obviously due to book talk and YouTube and Instagram and all of that stuff. I really enjoyed it. Definitely give it five stars as I just said. This is a another one of those things where it's a fake dating trope our main character she's been telling her family that she has been dating a guy and um yeah she definitely has not been and <laughs> she's telling her co-worker this and i don't know if it's her boss or like one of her co-workers he ends up hearing this issue and says hey i'll volunteer i'll help you out if you help me out so they basically become each other's dates to certain events and obviously that fake dating trope happens and we all know what happens from there so this was super cute it definitely dealt with our main character she is has family from spain if she's not from spain i think so that was really cool to see and definitely Definitely, like even though this is a chunky book I flew through it I enjoyed it so so much and I definitely think that both of these as a fake dating kind of trope both of them are very very good and well well worth it and I don't even know which to pick which would be my favorite out of the two to be honest a YA book that I gave five stars to was one I kind of read closer to the end of the year and that's XOXO by Axie O I 
honestly loved this book. So when I talked about reading it for my December TBR, I thought that they had met like at school or like at some sort of camp for music. No, 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 I was completely wrong. Our main character, she works at this karaoke bar in the States and she ends up going to one of the private rooms to kick this guy out because basically he's just been like sitting in the room for too long and not paying for it. And lo and behold, it's this young guy. Obviously, he's super cute. She's like, hey boy, you need to get out of here. And so they end up like going kind of on this little adventure for the night because she found out, I think, that she just didn't get the best, um, not report card, but like, the best feedback on one of her performances and so she is a cellist and so she's kind of bummed about that and it's like more so she's very technical in her abilities but they're like no you need more emotion you know basically live and feel the music and understand it so that is what starts this whole adventure out. They, like I said, kind of spend this, not night together, but they go on this, these little adventures, um, go out to eat, do a couple fun things, and it was super cute, and then like the clock strikes midnight and they end up parting ways. So I thought this was super cute. The main character's grandmother, who still lives in South Korea, is ill, so her mom's like, I need to go home, convince grandmother to have this surgery. So you're dealing with like family health issues. The main character is like, hey, I want to go to South Korea, live in a different place, try something new. So she applies to one of the performing arts institutes or schools, high schools there. And guess who she meets? One of the boys or the boy that she found in the karaoke room. And it turns out he is a huge K-pop idol. And you know, if you know anything about K the K-pop industry and things like that, like dating is just like a no-go. It definitely can kind of like ruin the image or what what have you and I just really liked this I thought it was just so much fun definitely had some very hard-hitting topics super cute super fun and I just love this cover and even when you take the dust jacket off like it still has like the same thing except the um, the XOXO on it so super cute I really loved this one not just for the cover, but it definitely had some good points to it and I really enjoyed it. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching my favorite romance books of 2021. Stay tuned, I have a couple more books to do in this like end of year wrap up um, for last year now. And again, I hope you had a absolutely fabulous New Year's. I hope that this year brings lots of change in all the good ways. And you know, if you have any recommendations for me, have read any of these books or have any thoughts or opinions, I would love to chat about it, talk about it in the comments down below. And I hope you have a great day and happy reading. Bye.